So today we're going to start with functions. So this week we're going to talk about functions. Uh, functions is relation between X and Y, pretty much. Um, it's very important that you understand what is a function because we're going to deal with functions a lot. Uh, we're going to add functions, subtract functions, multiply, divide functions. So pretty much in high level math, uh, functions are like numbers. Okay, uh, so let's see what is a function. So we have a set of elements. So set of elements pretty much it's, you can define everything to be set of elements. Like all of you guys, a set of elements. So first I'm explaining what is a function. So we have, uh, set of elements. So I have, let's say, these are my all my students in this class. So I have student A, student B, student C. These are just your names, and so on. So I have everybody in this class make a set of elements. Then I'm doing something with each element for this set, and I'm gonna get another set of elements. So for example, all of you guys are gonna take lab three. So what I'm doing, I'm gonna grade each of your lab three. So student A, when I grade your uh, lab three, I'm gonna get a grade, which let's say hopefully is gonna be a hundred. Then student B is gonna get another grade, let's say 97. And then student C is going to get another grade, another 100, right? Hopefully, everybody gets 100. Okay, so, and so on, everybody get a grade. So this is a function, a relation between X and Y, relation between two sets of elements. For this relation, what is important, whatever you do, you have to do it only once. So the set of elements you start with, it's called domain. And usually it's represented with the letter X. And the result, the set of elements you receive, it's called range. And usually you're using the letter Y for the range. So that's why they call it, that's why we're saying the relation between set of elements X and set of elements Y. And that's what you're doing is the function. Okay? So the function is actually grade in your lab three and the function the notation of function usually is f of x this is how you're gonna see it f of x g of x p of x so this is a notation this is your function so what you're doing from with each elements from the domain is the function so what is important Everything you do, you do it only once, which means every student get only one grade for lab three. And uh, F, look at this like F is the name of the function. So the first letter here is the name of the function. And X tells you that you have a function. And X is the domain, okay? So look at it like that. You don't multiply f and x. You don't do anything with them. Just f of x together give you notation of function. You know you have a function. Okay? Uh, so the function can be f of x. You can have it also g of x. It can be lap 3 of x. See, this is the notation. This is the name of the function. Okay? It can be p of x, capital P, lowercase p, doesn't matter. So this is, this is how you write, you have a function, okay? So there are different ways to represent the function. One way is just if you draw it like this, but it sometimes can get really messy, so we're not using that notation. Uh, you can also represent the function with a, gra with a little table and also with the graph and the equation. So we're going to just talk about these three different ways of representing a function. So one way is if you make a little table, oops, sorry. So you're gonna make a little table. That's another way of representing it. 
And in this little table, you're going to have X, you're going to have Y. So X is the domain, Y is the range, okay? So I'm going to give you an example of function. So let's say my X, my domain, are the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I define, you define what is the domain, pretty much. So the domain, the set of elements I start with is X, and these are my five numbers, okay? And then I'm doing something with each number, and I'm going to get the result. The range is going to be 1, 4, 9, 16, 25. Can you tell me what I'm doing with each number to get the Y? What I'm doing with X to get Square, Y? You're squaring it. Good job. I'm squaring, right? I'm squaring each number. See, one square is one, two square is four, three square is nine. Everybody see that? Okay. So this function square each number, right? So one way to do that is if I just write it like this in a table, or I can also represent this, the same function, like equation. I can say y equals x squared because I'm squaring each x. Okay, and if you remember last time I told you, if you have f of x, think about like y. So I can write the equation of the function y equals x squared, or I can use functional notation, and I can write f of x equals x squared. Both of those are the same. Make sense? The first one is like equation of the function. The second one is functional notation. But both of those tell me that my function is squaring each number. Okay? Everybody understand this so far? And then I told you there is a third way, one more way of representing a function. And that way it's a graph. So I can just graph it. Okay? And I can just make a graph here. So you have x-axis, you have y-axis. And let's say this is my graph. Okay, whatever it is. Okay, so now the question is, if I give you any table, is that going to be a function or no? Because for function, what is important, uh, I'm going to write it here. What is very important for 1x, there is only one y. So something is a function when for 1x, you have only one y. Let me write it better. Only one y. Okay? So that's what is important. So if you have any table, how you check if that table is a function or not a function. So I'm going to give you another one. And I'm going to give you a few more examples of tables. And you're going to tell me, is that a function or not a function? Okay, I'm going to make more tables here. And you're going to look at the table and you're going to decide, is that a function or not a function? Okay, so that's the question first. And then you'll start with the actual examples. Okay, so we have this, the first table here. I'm doing another one. So I have X and Y. And this is my table. I have one five seven three um, nine five okay so this is another table and then i'm gonna make one more here and i have x and y and let's say i have five thirteen seven 18, 5, 20. Okay, so let's look at these three tables and tell me. So this is table 1, this is table 2, and this is table 3. And let's see which one of those is a function, which one of those is not a function. So the rule, if something table is a function, for 1x you have to have only one y. So let's see. Any suggestions, ideas? Which one is a function? 
one and three. So number one, okay, let's start like this. Number one, is that function or not a function? That's number a function. one, it's a function. Okay, you say it's a function. Number two, is this function or not a function? Because for one X, you have only one Y, right? Okay, uh, somebody said not a function. Why is not a function? Or why it's a function? I mean, obviously, the first one, all the X's are different, all the Y's are different, right? So it's a function, okay? Now, the second one. Okay, you can guess. So not a function or function. So let's think about for one X, you have one Y. y right so one x x is one y is five x is seven y is three x is nine y is five so is that a function it's a function because all the x's have different y's right yes it's a function so this is also a function okay so this is yes. So it's only when the X's repeat? Yes, that's correct. Only when the X's repeat is not a function. Good job. So this is not a function because why? Because I have X is 5, Y is 13, okay? But then you have another X is 5 and, X, and Y is 20. So that means 5 get two answers for y. Make sense? See, x, the y's could be the, the same. See the example I give you here with the students in lab two, lab three, um, you can um, see every student have to have only one grade or one x, only one y. But the y can be the same. You can have 100 and 100, it's okay. But every student get only one grade. Everybody understand that? Yes. So uh, if you have repeating X, it's not a function. Everybody understand the rule? And I'm going to write it here. So the rule for finding if table is a function or not is going to be if you have repeating X, then it's not a function. Okay, then you're gonna go to the equations. So if I give you an equation, how you know if that equation is a function or not a function? So this is the rule for equation. I'm gonna give you some equations and you're gonna tell me what you think first. So let's say I have equation y equals x squared. <clears throat> and again, f of x and y means the same. Uh, another equation is gonna be, so these are the same equations. Another equation I can give you is, let's say it's x squared plus y squared equals 4. Another one could be x plus 7y equals 20. And another one could be, that's enough. Okay, so, um, so I have room to write the rule. Okay. So looking at these equations, what you think is the equation, it's a function, which one you think is not a function? Any guessing here? Somebody wanna guess? It's okay, let's guess. So the first one, do you think the first one it's a function? No, why not? So for one X, you get one Y, right? So, if I, let's say, give number for x, let's say x is 1. When I plug it in, somebody second said the second one is not. That's correct. So if x is 1, y is going to be 1 squared is 1, right? If I have x is negative 1, y squared is going to be negative 1 squared is one also one y okay now let's look at the second one 
So let's say <clears throat> x is zero. It's easy to see. So when x is zero, so I'm replacing x with zero, I'm going to get y squared equals four. So what is y equals? Two, that's right, and negative two also, because two, two times two is four, negative two times negative two is also four. So here we get for one x, the two value for the y. So that's why this function, the second function is not a function, okay? And the first function is a function because for one, one function, one x, you have one y, okay? What do you think about the third one, function or not? The function, that's correct, yes. So this is yes. Okay, so now what is the rule? The rule to check if the equation is a function or not is going to be the y square. So if you have, if the equation have y square, then not a function. Remember that, because y square is going to give you two solutions, positive and negative. Okay? Everybody understand that? So it's okay to have x square, but the y square is going to give you the two answers. Okay? So that's how you do the equations. And then let's look at the graphs. So the graphs, I have one graph here, and I'm going to get you a few more graphs to just analyze and see when it's a function, when it's not. So I'm going to give you a straight line. I'm going to give you this one. And also I'm going to give you another function, let's say a circle, another graph, sorry. Let's make it better. So I have these three graphs. Which one you think is not a function? Well, you know what, let's change the circle to like this. Sideway parabola. Okay, so what you think is a function? So how you check it for one X, there is only one Y, which means for this X, the first function, this is the Y, right? For this function, this is the Y. For this X, this is the Y. So here for the graphs, we're doing vertical line tests. It's called vertical line test. And this is the vertical line. You have imaginary vertical line and you move it left to right, your graph left to right, and see how many times your line is crossing the graph. If you cross once, it's a function. If you cross more than once, it's not a function. So that's the rule. So we're doing vertical line test. If you cross more than one, once, then it's not a function. So that's the rule, okay? So let's look at your graphs. The first one, is it a function or not? Yes, that's correct. This is function because you have only once. You, each line is going to cross once. How about the second one? This one, the line, the straight line. Is it a function? Yes, because if you have imaginary vertical line, you're going to cross only once everywhere. How about the third one? Nope, it's not a function because if I have a line going here, how many times you're crossing the graph? Two times, okay? So that's why this is not a function, okay? Everybody understanding that? Any questions about functions? 
So function is a relation between x and y, and you have one x, only one y. Uh, there are three ways. I show you three ways to represent the function. We're going to use mostly graph and equations, but I show you the table also, sometimes using tables. So table is a function if you have different x's. If you have repeating x, it's not a function. If you have given equation, then y square in the equation is going to tell you it's not a function. And if you have test, I mean, if you have a graph, you're going to do vertical line test. Okay, so this is about function. This is how the function looks like. And you're going to do a lot of things with functions. So I forget absolute value. So absolute value, um, how you know the equation, of, or I'll explain number one. Okay, so we're going to do, we're going to start with your lecture here. We're going to start with your notes. We're going to go over the first questions is like, is that a function or not? We're going to ask you what is the domain? What is the range? Domain is X. The range is Y. Remember that. And we're going to find domain. We're going to find restrictions pretty much. Uh, so this is pretty much the beginning. And then after that, you're going to do algebra function, which means adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing functions. Okay. So let's start with number one. And number one is asking us to check if this function is a function or not a function. So how you know? Let's look at the equation. They give me equation, right? Okay, equation have no y square, but also have absolute value. So absolute value, it's also, I'm gonna add it to the list up there. It's also another function which give me two value. And let me explain why. So, no y square, and I'm going to add also no absolute value of y. It's also not a function. And let me explain why. So I'm going to do the same number for x, and let's see what's going on. Yes, that's correct. Uh, Takisha asking absolute value can give you negative and positive. That's correct, yes, because absolute value of Let's see. I'm going to I'm going to work this out so I can see. So here we're going to pick a number for X. Let's say X is zero. It's always easier to do. Or you can do one or five. Let's do one. You can just pick X is equal one. And you can do zero later. Doesn't matter. So when X is one, what's happened? I'm plugging in one in my equation. So I'm going to get. Uh, x, uh, absolute value of y minus 5 times 1 equals 0. So I'm replacing x with 0, I'm sorry, x with 1. And this is what I get. Now, 5 times 1 is 5, so I'm going to move it over. So I'm going to add 5 in both sides. And I'm going to get absolute value of y equals 5. What that means? What is y? From here, y can be 5 because absolute value of 5 is 5. Or I can have y is negative 5. Because absolute value of negative 5 is positive 5. Absolute value means the distance from 0. Okay? So if you think about the number line, you have the 0 is here. So from 5... To zero, absolute value is five, right? The distance is five. And also from negative five to zero, when you count the steps, absolute value of negative five also is going to be five. So the answer here for when x is one, we're going to get positive five and negative five. See, for one x, there are two y's. Okay, so what that means? That means this is not a function. Okay, everybody understand that? So this is not a function because for one x, you're going to have two different y's. Okay, now what's happened if you have absolute value of x? Then that's a different story. So I'm going to uh, just put an extra example here. So let's look at this example. So I'm doing extra example here. 
example. So what's happen if I have absolute value of x minus y or equals y? Absolute value of x equals y. What's happen if the absolute value is around x? If x is 1, what you're going to get? You're going to get y is 1, right? Because absolute value of 1 is 1. When x is negative 1, y also is going to be 1, but the x is a different. So it's still okay. Everybody see that? So this is the case with, if you go back to the table, this is the case like example 2. Do you have the same y, but the x is a different. So this is a function. Okay? So if you have absolute value of x, this is the example when you have the same y, but the x is a different. So it's a function. So this is yes. Everybody understand that? So this is a function. The one above is so not a function. These, yes. these absolute values um, are always going to be like squares. So like if there's a positive, there's also a negative for it. Like because we're working with parabolas now. So it's always going to be that way or what? Uh, yes. Absolute value. If you have absolute value or if you have y squared, both of those give you uh, two answers. Yes. Okay, so if you have uh, in your equation, see, I added it here. In your equation, if you give you an equation, if you have y squared or absolute value of y, both of those is not a function. Okay, if you have absolute value of x, it's a function, but absolute value of y is not a function. You got it? Yes. Okay. Any questions so far? No? Okay. So we're going to number two. Where we're going to do another example. So I'm going to write the rule here. Uh, I'm going to write absolute value of y is not a function. Uh, y square is also not a function, but absolute value of x is a function. Okay? So these two are not a function. Let me make it a little down so it's not that. So these two are not a function, and absolute value of x is a function. Okay? So these are the kind of basics for equations you can remember. Okay, then you're going to number two. And number two, they asked me to find, uh, looking at this function, find the domain. Okay? And the next one also find uh, asked me to find the domain. See, find the domain and range. I'm going to explain the range also. But okay. And for this one, find the domain. Okay. So pretty much, uh, web assign is going to ask you to find the domain only. But I'm going to explain here what that means. If you remember, domain is x, and the range is y. So f of x was my y, right? Okay, so I have equation. Yes, domain is x, the range is y, that's right. Okay, domain is always x, the range is always y. So my equation is y equals negative 9x plus 9. Okay, what type of function it is? We talked about y equals mx plus b last week. This is what? This is Equation of line, right? So equation of line. Um, 
is there a restriction for equation of y? The only restrictions we talk about was fraction, right? So that means you can plug domain is x. You can plug any number for x. So that means the domain, if there's no fraction, no square root, always is going to be negative infinity, infinity. So that's how you write the domain. And I'm going to write it like parentheses. Um, you know what? Let me write it. You're going to use minus infinity, infinity, and then close the parentheses. Okay? So the domain is negative infinity, infinity. I'm going to write it down here. Okay, so the domain, I'm going to write it like this. Domain, negative infinity, infinity, that's how you write it. And the range is also the same. Okay, and how I know that? If there is no fraction... And if there is no square root, looks like this. And fraction means like this. Then this is the domain and this is the range always. Okay? So no fraction, no square root, domain and range are always this. Negative infinity, infinity because you can plug any number for x. Okay? Now, when you have fraction, when you have square root, there are restrictions, and that restricts your domain, okay? And I'm going to show you how to do that. So let's go ahead and find do number three. Any questions so far? So now, if there are no fractions, no square roots, the domain is always negative infinity, infinity, and that's how you write it. And I'll show you in a web sign how to plug it in. Negative infinity, infinity. That's your answer. Now, what's happened if you have fraction or if what's happened if you have square root? So this is what you're doing. So the next one asks me for square root. So when you have square root, the restriction for square root is Everything inside the square root has to be a positive number. So everything inside has to be a positive. If it's negative, it is, the calculator is going to give you not real, it's going to give you error. Okay? So what's happened? I'm going to take everything inside, which is 4x plus 5, and this have to be greater or equal zero always has to be positive and when you solve that that's going to be the domain that's going to be the restrictions for the x x can be only number which make 4x plus 5 greater or equal to zero and how you solve it the same way you solve an equation you subtract 5 in both sides and that give me 4x greater or equal negative 5 divided by 4 and I get x is greater or equal negative 5 over 4. So that's the domain. x have to be greater or equal to negative 5 over 4. And this is how you do interval notation because that's what they say. Use interval notation. And this is what you're doing. I'm going to graph this so I can see how the intervals look like in the graph. So x have to be greater or equal negative 5 over 4. So let's say negative 5 over 4 is here somewhere. Negative 5 over 4. And x have to be greater than, have to be bigger. All the bigger numbers are in the right side. Yes? So x is going to be here, bigger. And going to infinity, right? 
the number one, you have negative infinity in this side, positive infinity in the right side. Now, because you have greater or equal, the symbol we're using is greater or equal, you're going to use bracket in this side. So always, I'm going to write it like a rule. Always, if you have greater or equal, or if you have less or equal, you're using brackets in the interval notation. Okay? If you have greater than or less than or not equals, or if you have inf negative infinity or infinity, all of these symbols, you always use parentheses. Okay? That's why here for negative infinity, infinity, you use parentheses because infinity always goes with parentheses. So that's the rule. So bracket means you include, it could be equal to negative 5 over 4. Okay? So you use bracket here at negative 5 over 4, and infinity always goes with parentheses. So that's how you write your domain. The domain is going to be, I'm going to write it here, show you how to put it in web assign in a second. So domain is going to be bracket negative 5 over 4, comma, infinity, parentheses. Okay? And you need to put all these symbols. You have to put print a bracket, and then you have negative 5 over 4, comma, infinity. I'll show you where is the infinity symbol. And then infinity goes with parentheses always. Okay? So that's how you find the domain. So this here should be your answer for frac for square root. And I'll show you fraction also. Okay? Everybody good so far? I'm going to go on web assign and I'm going to show you how to plug it in. Yes, I'm going to do one more. Yes, I'm doing few, two more actually. Okay, so here's my web assign. This is number six, seven, and eight. This is the one way they ask you to find when they ask you to find the domain. Okay, so this is what you're doing. The first one is number six. And number six, the function is negative eight x plus five. Now this function doesn't have fraction, doesn't have square root, right? So this is no fraction, no square root, right? So if there is no fraction, there is no square root, what is the domain? You don't do anything. Domain is going to be parentheses, negative infinity, infinity. That's the domain. And that's what you're going to put here. And let me show you how to put it. So when I click inside, I'm going to look at the math path in the right side over here in the corner. You see math path? And I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so here it is. So we're going to do, click inside the box, then you're going to put parentheses in the keyboard, then you're going to put minus, and then you're going to go to symbols. So when you click at symbols here in the math path, you're going to see this infinity symbol. Okay? Click infinity, then you're going to put comma, and then click infinity one more time, and then close the parentheses. So that's how you enter your domain, minus infinity, infinity. So you put parentheses in the keyboard, minus in the keyboard, and then go to symbols, infinity, comma, infinity, close the parentheses. Okay? So that's how you do this one. Then we're going to go to do number seven. Number seven is frac uh, square root. So it's exactly like the one we just did, right? The one with the square root. So how you do that? You're going to take inside the square root first. And you're going to solve it greater or equal always 0. So you have 5x plus, sorry. Here is back. Plus 8. Have to be greater or equal always to 0. And then you're solving it. Move the number over minus 8, minus 8 in both sides. 
So you get 5x greater or equal to negative 8 and then divide by 5, both sides. So x is greater or equal to negative 8 over 5. So in the number line, you're going to have negative 8 over 5. x is greater, so it's going to be going to the right side. You're going to use bracket because greater or equal. And infinity is going to be parentheses. So that's how you're going to put the domain. So you're going to put bracket, negative 8 over 5, comma, infinity. And I'll show you how to plug it in again. Okay. Comma, infinity. Okay, so this is how you do it. I'm going to go inside the box. I'm going to click inside. And then you're going to go to the map path, which is again in the site. So inside the box, you're going to put bracket, which is your keyboard. And then you're going to put minus 8 slash 5. It's going to give you fraction. Then with the error, you have to get out of the fraction, comma, and then you're going to go to symbol, symbol, and go to put the infinity symbol. And then you're going to use close the parentheses. Now, if you do it like this, it's gonna, you need to delete the, you have to change the one in the end to bracket, so to parentheses. So when you have bracket and parentheses, see sometimes, uh, you need to go and delete the, the close bracket to parentheses. You can do it here. If you go to your, and I'm going to show you here. So if you go to your map path, in the map path, you have bracket and parentheses together. If you go to sets, sets give you bracket and parentheses. So you can just put this right away. Okay? Like that. Instead of using the keyboard, you can do sets, do the bracket in this, and then you do the negative 8 over 5 and, print and infinity. Okay? So that's how you do this one. And then the last one, last one where they ask me to find the, we're going to do one more. So the last one here is uh, find the domain again. And uh, finding the domain. Uh, we have fractions, so pretty much you're going to do the same like restrictions we did like in week one. So here what you need to do, we need to, uh, I'm going to different, use different color here. So when it's a fraction, I need to take the bottom of the fraction. Remember the restrictions come from the bottom. And you have x minus 1 is in the bottom. You have to solve it not equal 0. And then how you do that, you're going to add 1 in both sides. And this will give me x not equal 1. So this is the restriction. Now, how are you going to write it with interval notation? You have a number line again from negative infinity to infinity. So x is not equal to negative 1 means x can be anything else but 1. So we're going to go to the 1 in the number line. So x can be bigger than 1. So it can be this way. Or x can be smaller than 1. can be this way. Everything else. So you're going to use parentheses at 1 like this. And 1 is in the middle. So we're not including 1. So you, the x is going to start from negative infinity to 1 with parentheses. Then from 1 to infinity. So here you're going to have two intervals. Okay, so this is how you write the domain. The domain is going to be parentheses, negative infinity, comma 1, plus parentheses. Then you're going to use the symbol union, and I'll show you where it is. And then parentheses, 1, comma, infinity, parentheses. So this is how you do it. Okay? So that's how you write the domain. Negative infinity 1, union 1 to infinity, which means 
both of these intervals of domain. X can be from negative infinity to one or could be from one to infinity. And this is how you enter it. So you're gonna go to the box here. You're gonna use math uh, path. So you see the math path. What you're doing, we're gonna, <clears throat> you can go to sets. You can use parentheses and parentheses. That's what you're using, right? And you, then you do minus. If you go to symbols, you're gonna get infinity symbol, comma one. Close the parentheses, and then the union is also in sets. So when you go to sets, this is the union, the first one down in the bottom. This is union. This is interception. So using union, open up. And then parentheses one comma, and then go to symbols to get the infinity symbol, and then close the parentheses. Okay, so this is how you do the domain, and this is how you enter it in web assign. So how did you? How did you? Yeah, how did you find the restriction for that, and how did you know to find the restriction for that? Okay, because when you have your when your function it's a fraction function it's a square root you have restrictions because if you remember where the restrictions for fraction come from you cannot divide by zero division by zero it's undefined and if you, you can i'm gonna go to symbol up to show you this is where the restriction come from if i have number divided by zero if i have five divided by zero it's going to give me error. It's not possible. See, undefined, right? Remember that? So the bottom cannot be zero in the fraction. Now, when you have square root, I'm going to show you square root. So I'm going to press square root of negative four. Square root of negative, it's not real. See, it's going to give you two i. Two i is not a real number. Two i is a complex number. If you put this in your actual calculator, it's going to give you an error. Okay? So that's why. Imaginary. See, it's imaginary number. Complex number. Okay? So division by zero, square root of negative, they're not real. And the functions are only real numbers. Okay? Does that answer your question? or? Uh, part, part of it. So... Yeah. I, I guess the other half, and I know we went over this in, in week one, but it's the actual math of of finding the the restriction in that in that denominator there. Okay, so actual finding the restriction in the denominator, actually taking the bottom, solve it equal zero to see which number for x is gonna make the denominator zero, and that's your restriction. You cannot have that. Make sense. So you're yes. solving, solving the bottom not equal zero. Okay? So remember, when you have to find the domain, if you have no fraction, no square root, the domain is going to be all this. This is the domain always. If you have square root always, everything inside, whatever it is, always greater or equal zero. And your domain always going to be bracket, comma, Parentheses. Okay? If you have fraction, always bottom of the fraction not equals zero. And then the domain always gonna be something union something else. Okay? So for that equation Everybody you plug it in uh one. Uh if instead of one, if it was at a let's say it's a X minus three, would you be would it be negative infinity, three union yes. three infinity? Okay. That's right, yes. So if it's not one, if it's three, it's gonna be negative infinity three, three to infinity, yes. That's correct. Okay? Everybody good? So that's how you find the domain. Let's continue. So we have number four. Uh number four, uh it's about um they give me a graph. And they're asking, is that a function or not a function? What do you think it is? Not a function. Not a function because it's a graph and you're gonna do vertical line tests. 
So if I have this vertical line test, it's going vertical line is gonna cost two hours. Is not a function. Okay, that's right. And then we're gonna continue with uh, algebra function. And algebra function, it's pretty much uh, uh, no. First is evaluating function. So we're gonna evaluate a function. So here they give me a function, and you're gonna plug it in pretty much. That's what you're doing. So we have f of x equals eight over x minus eight. So this is my function technically. F of x is just notation. We don't do nothing with that. We just look what is after the equal sign. So my function, my actual function, it's eight over x minus eight. So what you're doing, you need to find what is f of two. f of two means you're replacing x in the function with two. So my function is eight over, in the place of x, I'm gonna put something minus eight, you plug it in. And the x is gonna be replaced with two, and that's what you're doing, you're simplifying it. Here you can use symbol up. If you want, you can use symbol up. So you can just put fraction just the way it is. Let's delete that. So it's a fraction, eight over two minus eight. Oops, sorry. Eight over two minus eight. That's exactly how this looks like, right? 8 over 2 minus 8, and then the calculator give me, you can do it in your head, but you have to reduce the fraction. Use the fraction, not the decimal, negative 4 over 3. That's my answer, and that's what you're going to put inside, minus 4 slash 3. Then the next one is the same way. We need to do f of negative 3. So now we're going to follow the function again. So the function is 8 over x. I'm going to put number for x minus 8. And then the x is going to be negative 3. Because that's what you have in the place of x, negative 3. So again, you can just go back to symbol up and change the 2 to negative 3. And then the answer is negative 8 over 11 is the fraction. We have negative 8 over 11. That's the answer. And then the next one is, so pretty much you plug it in numbers for x. The next one is f of k. f of k means you're going to follow the function and you're going to replace x with k. Now because um, So the, the, the x is going to be replaced, the, the k. k is going to replace x. So uh, what that means, you're going to copy the function. I'm going to put it here, 8 over k minus 8. And this is your answer. OK? Um, <clears throat> so pretty much you simply you plug it in and then simplify if you can. This one, it's a, k is a, not a number, so that's it. Just leave it with k. In the place of x, you have k. So just copy it like that. <clears throat> and then the last one, it's f of k squared minus 1. So here we're going to replace it. So your answer is going to be 8 over your x is k squared minus 1. That's your x minus 8. And what you can simplify is just adding these two numbers. So it's going to be 8 over k squared minus 9. And this is what you're going to put in your web assign. Okay? Any questions so far? How do we input k? In what assignment? Just the letter K in the keyboard. 
or if you do it web, in web assign, you just put K. In, instead of X, you put K. You just press K in the keyboard. Okay. Uh, number six, it's another one where um, they ask you to find the different quotient. And the different quotient, it's something, if you watch the video in WebAssign, it's going to tell you how to do it. But I'm going to show a different shortcut met method here. So the shortcut is, if you have to, uh, to find the different quotient, the different quotient is the slope. So what is the swap? Can you tell me what is the swap? So we're going to compare with equation of line y equals mx plus b. So the different so quotient six. is the same like the swap. Yes, that's right. So the swap is the number in front of x. <clears throat> so the answer is 6. That's it. <clears throat> okay any questions then let's see number seven it's another word problem uh here they're saying that um a football game a concessioner paid the vendor 40 dollars per game or saying hot dogs uh 250. uh we have to find the function right the function uh, where the, which describe the income, it's I. So what is the income during the game if the vendor sells X hot dogs? So here there is no formula, you just have to use your common sense. So let's say you are selling hot dogs in a game. Each hot dog is 250 and you're going to sell X of those hot dogs. So what is going to be the function? How how much you're gonna get income? It's gonna be two fifty times x, right? Because if you sell hot dog ten hot dogs, you're gonna multiply two fifty by ten to get how much money you're gonna collect, right? If you yeah, sell twenty, you multiply by twenty, right? So you multiply by x. So your equation is gonna be two fifty. Two dollar and fifty cents times X, but you also have to pay to the vendor. So pay to the vendor means you're gonna subtract forty dollars from your income because you're not getting forty dollars extra. You're paying forty dollars. So that means the equation is gonna be two fifty X minus forty dollars. So that's your equation. Then the next question they're asking, find the income if you sell 215 hot dogs. And remember, the hot dogs was the X, right? So they're say, saying, follow the income formula. When X is 215, what is the income? So you plug it in 215 for X. So the income of... Two hundred and fifteen dollars, fifteen hot dogs, is gonna be two fifty times two fifteen minus forty. And when you calculate that, you're gonna get the income. And I can just put it here: two fifty times two fifteen minus forty dollars. We need to pay so. It's four ninety seven and fifty cents. Okay, so that's your answer. Any questions? Everybody good? Then I just multiply I just multiplied two fifty by 215, but then I forgot to subtract the 40, so. Okay, yeah, yeah, you have to subtract 40 because you have to pay $40. Okay, that's right. Okay, so now 
Let's do number eight. Number eight is actually the algebra and the rest of it is algebra function. So here we're gonna deal with two functions, okay? So far we did one function. So now we're gonna do two functions. So we have function f, which is, this is my function f, nine x plus three. And we have function g, which is four x minus seven. There are two different functions. One is f and the other one is g. Okay, these are the two functions. And then what they asked me to find, <clears throat> they want me to find f minus g of x. So I'm going to take function f minus function g, and I'm going to simplify it, and I'm going to keep it with x. That's all what we're doing. Okay? Uh, number nine is similar. <clears throat> we have function f, function g. Again, these are the two different functions, looks different. Doesn't matter what you have there, function f, function g. What you need to find, f plus g of 6. So here we're going to plug it in 6 for x. Because everything, number in parentheses means plug it in for x. And then you're going to add f and g, and I'll show you how to do it. So I just want you to read what it says first. Number <clears throat> 10, you have f given, you have g given, it's a different function, f and g. And here we do f times g, and you plug negative 5 for x. Okay, I'll show you how to do that. <clears throat> so all this, what is given here, you don't do anything, you just read what they ask you to do. Okay, number 11, the same way, you have f, you have function f given, you have function g, there are two different functions. Here we have to find f, over g means f divided by g of x. You keep it with x. You don't plug number there. And also you need to find the domain. And I'll show you how to do that. And then number 12 is going to be the last one for today. I have uh, function f, function g given. This is the after the equal is the function actually. And you have to find f minus g of number. Okay. So here... <clears throat> You just have to subtract the function and plug it in number for, for x. So I'm going to show you first the one where you have x. You don't plug numbers. So which are number 8? So I'm going to do number 8 first. We're going to keep it with x. I don't know why it's moving like that. So this one, you're going to keep it with x. So how you do number 8? <clears throat> so I have f minus g. So I'm going to read what it says, f minus g. So I'm going to copy f, which is 9x plus 3. And then I'm going to put it in parentheses because that's my f. Minus, I'm going to put g here. So I'm doing f minus g. And I'm going to copy that, 4x minus 7. So you're going to take f minus g because it's of x. Just keep it with x. You don't do anything with this f minus g of x, okay? So this is just tells you what to do. You don't do anything with f, anything with g, anything with x. So just this tells you what to do. Copy f minus copy g, okay? Then from here, we're going to take off the parentheses because this minus means minus 1 in front. We're going to do the parentheses and simplify. So we have, taking off the parentheses, it's 9x plus 3 minus 4x, and then minus times minus is going to be plus 7. This is common mistake. Be careful with that. And then you combine x with x and number with number, 3 and 7 combined. So 9x minus 4x is going to be 5x. 3 plus 7 is 10. So this is my new function. See, it's a new function, f minus g. So f minus g is going to be 5x plus 10. That's what you're going to put here, 5x plus 10. This is your answer for f minus g of x. Then finding the domain, looking at this new function, 5x plus 10, what is the domain? Do you have fraction? Do you have square root? No, right? No fraction. No square root. What that means? 
all real numbers. So the domain is going to be negative infinity, infinity, just like that. Okay? So you're going to put parentheses. You're going to put minus infinity. I don't have symbol here, but I'm going to spell it out. And then close the parentheses. Parentheses in both sides. Okay? So that's how you do number eight. So copy F minus copy G. Simplify that's your function. And domain, no fraction, no square root, is always minus infinity, infinity. Okay? Then you're going to go to the next one with X. I'm going to put here. So the next one you're going to go with X was, I'm going to skip 9. I'll be back to 9 and 10. So let's do number 11. And number 11, we have to find F minus, I'm going to go, okay. So you have to do F divided by G of X. So what you're doing? You're going to copy F over copy G divided by. So F is 3X plus 8. And G is 4X minus 4. And that's it. There's nothing to reduce. You have X, so you keep it with X. And that's your answer for F over G. That's your answer. You don't do anything. Copy F over copy G. Okay? Now, how you find the domain? <clears throat> Domain, because you have fraction here. Remember what you're doing with fraction? You're going to take the bottom of the fraction and you're going to solve it equal zero. So you have to solve 4x minus 4 equals zero. How you do that? You're going to add 4 in both sides. And it's going to be 4x equals 4. Divide both sides by 4, and you're going to get x not equal 1. That's the domain. How you write that? Parentheses, negative infinity, 1. Union is also 1 to infinity. This is my domain. Okay? And I already show you how to put that in web assign. <clears throat> so that's how you do the functions, algebra functions with x's. Now, let me show you how to do the algebra function with numbers. So you can do it two ways. You can do f plus g like number 9. You can do f plus g first and then plug it in 6 for each x. Or I think it's easy if you do plug 6 in f, plug 6 in g, and then add the numbers. So this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to do 6 in F, 6 in G, and then I'm going to add the two numbers I get. Okay? So I'm going to start with F. So in the function F, I'm going to replace X with 6. So I have X squared minus 7. And then in the function G, I'm going to do the same. I'm going to follow my function. 2 times x minus 5, and I'm going to plug it in 6 for both of the x's because that's what it says, x is 6. And then I'm going to do this, 6 squared is 36, minus 7 is, what is that? 29. Then I'm going to do 2 times 6 is 12, minus 5 is 7. <coughs> So when I plug it in in F, I get 29. When I plug it in in G, I get 7. So what you're going to do with those two numbers? You're going to do exactly what it says, F plus G. So I'm going to do 29 plus 7, which is 36. So that's my answer. So if it says plus, you're going to add them. If it says minus, you're going to subtract. If it's times, you're going to multiply the two numbers you get. If it's divide, you're going to divide. But first, you're going to plug the number for both of the functions. Make sense? So when you have f plus g or any 
combination of function of number, the answer is going to be a number. If it's f plus minus g of x, the answer is going to be another function with x. Keep that in mind. Okay? So that's how I do 9. Then let's go ahead and do number 10 the same way. So I'm going to take my negative 5. I'm going to put it in f. I'm going to put it in g. And then I'm going to multiply the two numbers times. So let's do f first. I have x squared minus 8. So just follow your function. Function g is 7x. I'm going to put x minus 4. So follow whatever the function is. And then in the place of x, you're going to put the number negative 5 for both of the x's. Now, always put parentheses when you plug number because see here negative 5 squared in parentheses means negative 5 times negative 5, which is 25, minus 8. And then you're going to simplify that. <clears throat> so what is 25 minus 8? 17, right? And then I'm going to do 7 times negative 5 is negative 35. Minus 4 is going to be negative 39. Okay, so these are the two numbers I, I get. What I need to, them, to do with them, I need to multiply. So I have to do 17 times negative 39. So when I multiply 17 times 39, it's going to be negative 663. And that's my final answer. Negative 663. Okay, everybody good? And then we have one more left for today, which is number 12. So we're going to do the same way. Number 12, we have function f, we have function g, and we have to find f minus g of negative 5. So again, you're going to start with plug it in negative 5 in f, negative 5 in g, and then I'm going to subtract the f, number from f, minus the number from g. So let's do that. We have in the function f first, I have x squared minus 3. And function g, it's 4x minus 3. And then in the place of x, I'm going to put negative, let me change that, negative 5. <clears throat> and then we simplify. Negative 5, negative 5 is 25. Minus 3 is 22. That's my first number. Then negative uh, five, 5 times 4 is negative 20. Minus 3. Negative 23. Then what you do with those two numbers? You're going to subtract f minus g. So you're going to do f. The number from f is 22. Minus the number from g is negative 23. So what you have? Negative, negative, it's positive. So it's going to be 22 plus 23 is 45. And that's my final answer, 45. Okay? We're going to stop here. We're going to finish next time. After this lecture for week three, it's going to be over quadratic equation, graph of quadratic function. Uh, and we're going to find, uh, see what type of graph is that and what is a vertex. And we're going to do also some application problems. So first, let's talk about um, quadratic function. So looking at number 13, 14, and 15, these are quadratic. See, they have square. So you have parentheses, x inside, square. The next one have square also, x square. The next one also have x square. So looking at my formula sheet, I'm going to talk about quadratic equation and graph and formula for quadratic equation. So this is the formula sheet you have uh, for the midterm exam, which cover a week one, two, and three. So week one was 
the first one here this is week one then week two we talk about equation of line and all that uh, and <clears throat> we have if you remember equation of line has two forms sloppy intercept and standard form equation of line this is what we did week two now today we're going to talk about equation of parabola and parabola is the graph of quadratic so equation of parabola this is what you do in week three uh, equation of parabola so you have squ square quadratic equation so there are also two different forms the first form is this one which is called vertex form y equals number x minus number square plus number so this is called vertex form and i'll explain what is vertex and the other form is y equals x square plus bx plus c this is standard form this is uh, you know this from the quadratic equation when you solve quadratic equation in week one see week one is right here so this is your week one quadratic formula so quadratic equation is the same but here we're gonna graph it we're gonna talk about the graph of the quadratic equation not exactly the solving the equation so that's the difference so this is what you have you have the quadratic equation and there are two different forms one of them is vertex this here is standard okay standard form vertex form so this is the equation what is parabola parabola is the graph of parabola is the graph a quadratic function so if you graph a linear equation you're going to get linear function linear straight line the graph is going to be a line if you have quadratic the graph is going to be parabola and the parabola looks like this open upside down like this up parabola is open up or parabola can be open down like this i'm making it thicker it's just one one line okay so the graph could be open up so the first case is open up and the second case is open down okay now in this graph looks like this so this is the graph going going all the way up and here going all the way down the graph continue down so this is the two possible cases of the graph of quadratic function it's a parabola the name of this graph is parabola so now <clears throat> it doesn't matter which form you have of the equation the graph is going to be one of these two how you know if it's open up or it's open down so this is how you know it's open up if a which is the number in front and the number in front here so if a is positive number the parabola is open up if a is negative it's open down and a is the first number in your equation the a is the number in front of the square so if a is positive it's going up the parabola is going up open up if it's negative it's open down now what is the vertex the vertex is the minimum or the maximum point so if it's open up this is your vertex this point is your vertex and if it's open down this point is your vertex okay and the vertex has coordinates h and k you have it right here h and k this is just Two coordinates number for x number for y so if it's open up the vertex is going to be a minimum point so this here is going to be minimum because it's the lowest point and if it's open down the vertex is going to be your maximum point because it's the highest point so remember that if it's open down you have maximum if it's open down you have a minimum vertex is the minimum okay now the question they're going to ask us is how to find the vertex so <clears throat> how to find the vertex if the equation is given in vertex form 
finding the vertex is really, really easy. So you're just going to look at CH and K. H is the number inside the parentheses. K is the number in the back. So just looking at the equation, you can find what is H, what is K. So H is always the opposite of the inside. So H is always, keep in mind, it's opposite number. Why is opposite? Because I have negative H, minus H inside. And K is always the same number in the back, the last number, the same number. Okay, that's how you find it. Just looking at your equation and just get the two numbers, nothing else. Now, if the equation is standard form like this, x squared x a number, then you're going to use the vertex formula. And this is the formula, and I'll show you how to use it. This is how you find h, and this is how you find k using the vertex formula. Okay, so if it's x squared x a number, remember the quadratic formula, you solve it. The vertex formula is going to help you to find the vertex. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to your notes. Yeah, the handout. And let's start looking at number 13, 14, and 15. So looking at these three equations, let's just first recognize which form we have. Do we have standard form or vertex form? So the vertex form looks like parentheses squared. So obviously the first one is in your vertex form. The second one, is it vertex or standard form? You have x squared, you have a number. This one you can look at both ways, but let's say it's a standard form. I'll show you in a minute. It's standard form. And then the last one obviously is standard form because you have x squared, x a number, so here you're going to use the, the vertex formula to find the vertex. So this is also standard form. And let me show you one more time the formula so you can see. The standard form has x squared, x a number, and the vertex has parentheses square and number in the end. Okay? So that's how you know which form it is. And then from here, they ask me to find the vertex. All of this says find the vertex of the parabola. How you find the vertex? If it's vertex form, it's really easy. Get the opposite of the number inside and get the same number in the end. So my vertex, so from these two numbers, you're going to get the vertex. So the vertex is going to be, the first number is opposite of the inside. So the inside number is negative 2. Opposite of negative 2 is positive 2. And then the second number in the vertex is the same number in the end, which is 6. And that's my vertex. You don't do anything. Just look at the two numbers. That's your answer. So my answer is going to be 2, 6. That's all. Okay? Now, the next one, when you have standard form, you have to work it out. You have to use the, the vertex formula. And this is the vertex formula. You have negative b over 2a. So from my, <clears throat> sorry, from my equation, I'm going to get what is a, what is b. So let me write the formula. h is negative b over 2a. So we need to find what is a, b, and c. So what is a? a, this is from week one. a is the number in front of x squared, which is negative 8. b is the number in front of x. There is no x, so it's 0. And c is the number by itself is 3. So from here, what you're doing, you're going to plug a, b, c into this formula. And the formula is negative b, which is 0, over 2 times negative 8 is your a. And then you can put it in symbol up or 0 divided by number is 0. So my answer for h is going to be 0. So I have h equals 0. Now, how you find k? 
The formula for K is F of H. That's what that means, F of H. And now we are familiar with here. Let me show you. See the formula is F of H. Now, what F of H means? We are familiar with functional notation. So F of H means you follow your function and plug it in zero because H is already zero. You, have, you found H is zero. So you're going to put zero into your function. So my function is the equation. So you're going to get K equals, I'm going to follow this equation. Negative 8, plug it in 0 for H, plus 3. Negative 8 times 0 is 0, so my K is going to be 3. So I have K equals 3. And that's my second number for my vertex. So the vertex is 0, comma, 3. That's your vertex. Okay, so that's how you do this one. Just plug it in. Use the formula negative b over 2a. Find your h, and then whatever h you find, you plug it in for x into the function. Okay, and then you're going to do it one more time. So here we have standard form, obviously. So we're going to get a, b, c. And you're going to plug it in into the formula, vertex formula. So looking at my equation, negative 3x squared plus 5x plus 7, I can say A is negative 3. B is the number in front of X is 5. And C is the number by itself, which is 7. In the formula, vertex formula, you don't have C, but I'm just writing it down. So we're going to start with plug it in into the formula. So we have h equals negative b over 2a. That's my formula. And you're going to plug it in. So we're going to get negative. Be careful with this negative in the formula. And then b is 5. So if b is negative, they're going to be two negatives, right? So I have negative 5. 2 times a is negative 3. And then you can just simplify this. You can just put it in the calculator. It's negative, negative, it's positive. 5 over 6. That's what you're going to get, 5 over 6. Okay, if you want, you can. I can show you how to do that in the calculator. So you do, uh, here you're going to press fraction. And then you have minus 5 over, in the bottom of the fraction, you're going to put 2 times negative, negative 3. And then it's going to give me 5 over 6, exactly what I get without calculator. Okay. And then, so this is the formula. So we get 5 over 6. So my first number here in my answer is going to be 5 slash 6, comma, and then I need to find the second number, which is k. And k is f of h. Now, what is your h? 5 over 6. So what that means, you're going to replace x. So all the x is here. are going to be replaced with 5 over 6. So just following the formula, it's going to give me negative 3. And then I'm going to put my x, which is the h, square plus 5 times. I'm going to put my number plus 7. So in the place of x, I'm going to put h, which is 5 over 6. And then this is a little bit, you need to do fractions, square fraction, multiply fractions, add, subtract fractions. So I'm just going to put it like that in the calculator. So in the calculator, I'm going to put like this. Oops. Negative 3. Parentheses, and I have 5 over 6. Then I have to be out of the parentheses to press square. Okay? Because you have to look exactly like this. You have negative 3, 5 over 6 in parentheses, and then square. 
then you have plus five. So I'm going to continue plus five. Another print is five over six. Then I have to get out of the parentheses again and then put plus seven. So you enter everything just the way it is in the, in the paper, plus seven. So just put it exactly like that. And then let's see what you're going to get. So after all the operations, you're going to get 109 over 12. So it's going to be 109 over 12. And this is my second number for the vertex. I'm going to put it here next to 5 over 6, comma, 109 over 12, like that. Okay? So that's how you do the find the vertex. You can use the formula, or if it's given in standard form, in the, if it's given in standard form, use the, the vertex formula. If it's given in uh, vertex form, you're going to just look at the equation and get the two numbers. Always remember the first number is opposite of this number inside, and the same number in the back. Always remember to get the opposite of the inside. So that's how you do the vertex. Okay. Number 16, they're asking for, uh, they give me the graph and they're asking, is it open up or down? So how you know if it's open up or down? Looking at your formula sheet, open up or down depends from the number in front of the square. Okay. So here, what is the number in front of the square? It's two. So A is 2, which is bigger than 0, positive. So if it's positive, the parabola is going to be look like this. It's going to be open up, right? So I'm going to pick here upward. It's open upward. Now, we need to state the maximum or the minimum. So the vertex, what is the, where is the vertex here? So the vertex is going to be this point here. And that's my vertex, right? So is it minimum or maximum? Is the lowest point in the graph? So that means this is my minimum point. And I'm going to pick the minimum point here. Okay? So for this one, you're just looking at the first number in front of the square, which is positive. That tells me the parabola is going to look like this. And the vertex is going to be a minimum point. Okay? That's all what they're asking. They're not asking for find the vertex. Just up or down, minimum or maximum. That's all. Okay? Then we have some applications here. So I'm going to do two application problems. So here I'm going to draw a little picture. Let's see what you have. We have a rectangular flower bed. Has the width is X and perimeter is given. So this is my flower bed. It's a rectangular. It's not... It's not a square. So the width is X, and let's say the length is Y. And the perimeter is 168. And so knowing that, what is the perimeter? The formula for perimeter is 2 times X plus 2 times Y. When you add all the sides, that's what you're going to get. So they give me, in this case, I'm going to have 2X plus 2Y equals 168. So looking at this formula, I have x and I have y. And they want me to find x. So that means I have to get rid of the y in some way. And also they say find y such that the area is maximized. So area, maximize area. So let's see. How you find the area if we have this flower bed? The area is going to be, the formula for the area is length times width. That's the formula. In this case, x times y. Okay? And what you need to do, you need to find the maximum for this area. Right? Okay? You need to find the maximum. Find the maximum area. So now... First, what I'm doing, I'm going to express the function, the area as a function of x. See, the area has x and y. So area has two variables. So what I'm doing from the equation from the perimeter, I'm going to get what is y. And that y, I'm going to plug it back here 
And in that way, the function a is going to have only x's. So let's solve this equation y by itself for the perimeter. So first, I'm going to divide everything by 2 because all the numbers are divisible by 2. So I'm going to divide by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2. Everything over 2. So I'm going to get x plus y equals, oh, no, sorry, 168. 168 divided by 2 is 84. I was going to say 84, but I doubt myself. Okay, <laughs> 8, 84. So now, x plus y is 84. So what I'm doing, I need to get y by itself. So I'm going to subtract x in both sides. And I'm going to get y equals 84 minus x. So now I'm going to take this y and I'm going to replace it here. And you'll see why I'm doing that. So because when I plug it in, so this is my y. 84 minus x is going to replace this y. So a is going to be x times 84 minus x. Okay, then I can multiply this to simplify. See, looking at this equation, my function has only x's. A, the area is expressed only in terms of x. There is no more y. So I can say this is function a of x because you have only x. And I'm going to multiply this to see what is my function, how my function looks like. So I'm going to multiply 8, 84 times x. So it's going to be 84x. And x times x is minus x squared. So this is my function in terms of x only. Now, what type of function it is? It's a quadratic function because I have square, right? Now, I know what is the graph of quadratic function. It's a parabola. Is the parabola open up or down? How you know? From the number before, in front of square. What I have in front of the square, I have minus 1. So in front of x squared, it's negative. So that means my parabola is open upside down like this. This is my graph, right? OK, so if my area looks like this, which one is your maximum? We need to find the maximum. The maximum is going to be exactly this point. So what is the name of this point? It's the vertex. So if parabola is up and down, the maximum is going to be the vertex. Now, if I have my function um, a of x equals, I'm going to switch x and y, uh, x squared is going to be in front, negative 1x squared plus 84x. How I'm going to find the vertex? I'm going to Find the vertex because this is standard form. So standard form means I have to use vertex formula. And what is the vertex formula? Negative b over 2a, this one. Okay? So we're going to plug it in into the vertex formula. So I'm going to find x is my h technically. So I'm going to use negative b over 2a. That's the formula I'm using. And I'm going to use from this equation, what is my a? a is in front of the square, negative 1. And what is my b? In front of x, 84. And C is going to be 0, but I don't need C in my formula. So I'm going to plug it in. So I have negative B over 2A. So I have negative. What is my B? 84 over 2 times negative 1 is my A. And then from here I can simplify. So it's negative 84 over 
negative 2. Negative, negative, it's a positive. When I divide by 2, it's going to be 42. And this is going to be my answer. This is going to be my x. So when x is 42, my area is going to be maximized. 42 feet. Okay, so that's how you do this one. Okay, here I can give you a little shortcut if you want, if you wish. So for this specific question, you can use this shortcut. Only for this specific question where they give you the, 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 the which is X, they give you the perimeter and they're asking what is the maximum area. So you find the maximum area when you get the perimeter and you divide it by four. You're gonna get the same. Why are you dividing it by four? By four? Because pretty much the maximum area is when you have a square, if the rectangle is a square which means all of the sides are x, 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 x. So that's why you divide by four to get the side of the square, technically. But this is only when they're asking you to find the maximum area, okay? So here you have shortcut with the golden color, or you have like step-by-step -step using the formulas how to do this, okay? Now, next one is number 18, which is actually the last one for this week. And we have number 18, it's another optimization, finding maximum of something. So here we're talking about a revenue. And the question is, let me do it like this. Okay, so the question is, okay, it looks better like this. Okay, there you go. So this is my question. A wholesaler of appliances finds to sell X, uh, I mean, one, 1800 minus X flat screen TV sets. So this is how many they're selling each week when the price is X dollars. So they give me the price is X and this is the quantity, how many, how many TV sets. What is the maximum revenue? That's what they're asking you. What is the revenue? So finding the revenue, those of you who are business students probably know. So the revenue function, the revenue is price times quantity, how many? So in this case, the price is X, the quantity is, so this is P and this is Q. So we're gonna plug it in in this formula, price times quantity. So it's gonna be X times 1800 minus X. So that's my revenue function and I can multiply here to simplify. So we're going to get the revenue function and it's going to be function of X because you have only X here. It's going to be 1800 X minus X squared. Now, this is my revenue function. What is the question? What price will maximize revenue? So they're asking, what is X? Okay, so maximum, maximize the revenue. So again, we're looking for maximum of this function. Again, what type of function is this one? We need to look at your function. The function we have is quadratic because you have square. Now, the graph of quadratic is parabola. How the parabola is open, up or down? We need to look at the number in front of square. In front of square, I have negative one again. So the graph looks like this. It's open downward. So where is the maximum? The maximum is gonna be right there in your vertex. So again, we have to find where is the vertex. The vertex, you're gonna find Looking at my equation, it's in standard form. 
So if you have standard form, you have to find the vertex using vertex formula. What is the vertex formula? Negative b over 2a again. And what I need to do is just get my a and b from the equation. So what is my a in front of square? So a is going to be negative 1. What is b? 1800 in front of x. So in front of square is a, in front of x is b. Okay, and then plug it in. So I have negative b which is 1800 is my b, over 2 times a is negative 1. And then I can just simplify that again. It's 1800, 1800 divided by negative 2. Negative, negative is positive. And when you divide by 2, you're going to get $900 should be the price to get the maximum revenue. And that's what they're asking you. Find the price so it's going to be 900 okay so that's end the lecture for week three this includes everything you're going to have in lab three uh, if you guys have questions you can put comment in the youtube video i'm going to post if not have a wonderful day